Okay, so we are going to do another example of drawing an extended free body diagram. So, here's one of the examples out of your problem set. A man or woman is trying to rotate, lift a flagpole that's connected by a pin to the ground, using a rope and pulling on that rope so that the flagpole rotates up to its vertical position. So the flagpole is seven and a half meters long. This first angle at this point in time is 30 degrees. This has an angle of 20 degrees. She's pulling with a tension, a force of 1,200 newtons. The flagpole has a mass of 28 kilograms, so a weight of 274 newtons, and it's uniformly distributed. Now, I may ask, we may ask about various uh, in, things that are interesting. What's the torque she's exerting? What is the force on the pin? Any number of things. But what we're going to do in this example is just draw an extended free body diagram. How do we determine the forces, the radii, and the angle at which those forces act on that object of interest, the flagpole? So, let's draw an extended free body diagram of our object of interest, which is the flagpole. Okay, so I like to draw my extended free body diagrams in the orientation that the object is. I think that's pretty standard. So what are the forces acting on this flagpole? Well, we certainly have the force of the pin. Now, we have no idea what the direction of that force of the pin is. But, like all forces, it's a vector. So we can um, break it up into its vertical and horizontal components. So we know that the force of the pin is between the pole and the pin, and it has two components. So, our vertical component, well, if that pin wasn't there, the pole would move in the downward direction, and therefore the vertical component must be in the upward direction. So here's the force of the pin vertical. Similarly, if that pin suddenly got pulled out, the pole would move in that direction, and so the pin must be pushing it in the opposite direction. Here's the force of the pin horizontal. All right, what's another interaction? Well, we know that there's the force of gravity. Well, that acts between the pole and the earth. The force of gravity acts at the geometric center. So what's the geometric, or sorry, at the center of mass. So what's the center of mass of a uniformly distributed object? Well, the center of mass is at the geometric center. And so this is a uniformly distributed pole. The center of mass is at the geometric center. And that then is where the force of gravity is acting. And just keeping in mind that that's the weight. All right, well, what else is interacting with this pole? Well, the rope itself. And so we have the rope, so the force of the rope, which we often refer to as a tension, and that's between the pole and the rope. That force acts at the end of the pole, as indicated. It acts along the direction of the rope, so there is our tension force. All right, now to determine the radii, we need to identify a pivot point. And depending on what we're analyzing in the problem, we could identify any number of pivot points to be strategic so that we analyze things the most efficient. Let's identify the pivot point in this example here at the pin. Now that might be an advantage because I'm not exactly sure what the angles are between that pin and the force, or the force of the pin itself and the rope. So this eliminates my need to worry about those angles because if I'm going to analyze the torque, I indeed know that the radius is zero. So we're going to select a pivot point at that location and let's look at the radii relative to that pivot point. So we first have the radii for the weight. Well, it's a uniformly distributed object. It's acting at the geometric center. The geometric center is half of 7.5. So this radius, let's put it in orange, since I used orange for the force. The radius of the force of gravity is 3.75 meters. All right, what about the radius for the tension? Well, it's acting along the entire 
pole, or for the entire pole, not acting along it, but the radius of the tension is equal to 7.5 meters. So my R sub T is equal to 7.5 meters, and my radius of the force of gravity is equal to 3.75 meters. So whether you write it or identify it on here, it doesn't matter to me. All right, now we have to worry about the angle. So the angle, remember, is if we go from the pivot point to the force, at least one method, the method that I've been modeling, from the pivot point to the force along the radius, extend that radius and curl to the force. So here is, oops, here is the angle for the force of gravity. If we use that angle, where we always extend the radius and curl to the force, then we can use the torque relationship that we've identified in its analysis. If we choose to use a different angle, that's fine. If, keeping in mind that it's the perpendicular component that we have to use in our torque analysis. So this is one example of an angle we may choose in our torque analysis. So the angle of the force of gravity is equal to what? Well, we are told that this angle is 30 degrees. If that angle is 30 degrees, and this angle is 30 degrees, plus I have an additional 90 degrees, 30 plus 90 is 120 degrees. The angle is in the clockwise direction, so it has to be negative. And now we can use that angle specifically in the torque analysis that we've identified and the direction will come out for us. What about for the tension? Well, we can follow the same process. Extend the radius, curl in the direction of the force. So there's my angle for the tension. And we know that this angle is 20 degrees. This whole thing has to be 180. So this angle has to be 160 degrees. It's in the counterclockwise direction, so it's a positive angle. And we can use that angle in our torque analysis. All right, so an extended free body diagram has to identify a pivot point, a very clear pivot point. I've identified it by that circle. You can also label it. The radii is from the pivot point to the acting force. We then identify the appropriate angle from the extension of the radius curling towards the force is one method. And if we have forces where the, we are at the pivot point, we know those torques are zero and they don't need to come into play. They still have to be drawn on our free body diagram, but the radii are zero, our extended free body diagram. All right, good job.